Let's go. Swansea visited the stadium light for what was expected to be a tight fixture. Swansea are one of the top sides for possession in the league and have a solid midfield of Matt Grimes and Joe Allen. Allen is amongst the best in the league for winning the ball. And Matt Grimes alongside him, the very best in terms of making progressive passing look easy. Matt Grimes is the most accurate passer of a ball in the championship. And on top of this, he averages 20 more passes per game than second place Louis Bayer. He's a quality player. Jack will drop in at times when they get numbers high as well, Swansea. Swansea have five of the top ten passers in the league, so this is a difficult team to play against. Unsurprisingly, all this translates into more scoring chances for Swansea. Yeah, it just comes into Joe Allen, just sets it with a nice weight for his centre midfield partner, doesn't he? You can see what he's And it's no surprise that Swan striker Joel Pirro also tops the league's expected goals chart. Swansea, though, have had a stuttering campaign to date and can be fragile at the back when pressed. They're one of the worst in the league for keeping clean sheets. Mowbray then selected an attacking midfield with Clark, Ahmad and Roberts all playing in support of Stewart and the plan was to press high and aggressively, denying Swansea the time to settle on the ball and keeping clean midfield possession for Grimes and Allen to a minimum. Defensively, it was a surprise to see Bath start on the bench. Tony instead selected 0-9 at centre-half alongside Ballard and Gooch at left-back with Hume keeping his place on the right. Mowbray, it seemed, wanted utility players with attacking nous to press the Swansea midfield. And this largely worked for the first 20 minutes as Sunderland dominated both possession and passing by 10% plus margins and firing off four shots to one. An excellent start. Certainly, we looked the brighter of the two teams in the first quarter. Then, Luko 9 took the aggressive press instructions to heart too much. It has been suggested that the reaction of the Swansea players induced the red card, but you can see here that the ref reaches for his left pocket where it is stored early on. He doesn't produce it until he sees what the conclusion of the ensuing melee is. Then, from his left, he produces a red for Luke. Oh, he's yeah. sending Luke off! Oh, a red card. He sent Luke off! And from his right, he produces a yellow for Cabango. Cabango's gone in the book there as a safe rank for getting involved. Just a yellow for Cabango. Is it a straight red? Finish him! <sighs> I don't know. Well, it's not two-footed, and it's not studs up. But it's debatable if Luke is in control here, and it certainly qualifies as overly aggressive and dangerous. But the red was given, and I don't know if we can really complain that much. Again, we haven't seen the replay yet, but yeah, straight red for Luke 09. Luke laughing, shaking his head, he can't believe it. That didn't look like a red card challenge to me, Danny. At first, Perhaps the better question to ask is, should Ahmad have had a penalty just prior to this? Cullen clearly kicks Ahmad's standing leg, and it's written all over his face as he looks to the referee in panic. It isn't given, and moments later Luko 9 is sent off. Ahmad's penalty claim is valid, but it would be soft. Is it a kick that would be enough to send a man to the ground? Likely not if that man were outside the box, but it is a foul, and it should be a penalty. In any case, the game was over as a contest from this point on. There is little to be gained from much tactical analysis here on in. Neither side would play normally as they did from this point onwards. Handing the best possession and passing side in the division a man advantage was always going to doom this match as a contest, and after the red, Swansea pushed their fullbacks up extremely high. Here, you can see that they are positioned almost as wing forwards. The consequence is to stretch Sunderland's defence immensely, making more space for the passing of Grimes and Allen in the middle of the park, with little press for them to worry about now. friends and family, of course. As with the Hull City game, Murray went 4-4-1, hoping to stay tight and steal one high up the pitch, with Stewart pressing the centre-halves on the halfway line. But it was a tall order, hoping for something to break for him. Gooch and Hume switched fullbacks so that Hume could support our remaining winger, Clark, on the left with some overlap and crossing ability. It shows who Tony values as a fullback the most between the two of them, I think. The lads hung on until just after half time when, no surprise, Grimes dropped a lovely ball into the Swans fullback Manning and the ball popped over to Perot for a tap in. Oh, he puts it across and it's in! It's a goal. There were some appeals for offside, but replays clearly show that the goal was good. 
he no, keeps no, he's nowhere near offside. No, he's nowhere not. near. No, his man has played it. He's, he's almost yeah. played it on the six-yard line. And he... Some people have blamed Gooch for this and asked why he isn't marking Manning out wide. But actually, I think it's Ahmad who makes life difficult here. He doesn't track back and he looks to have lost interest now and we're down to 10 men. Contrast his positioning with Jack Clark. Clark is back defending, allowing Hume to push inside and making a solid. Ahmad is just lazy here and we pay for it with Gooch dropping narrow to make playing through the middle tight. Ahmad has to track back and mark that fullback. But he doesn't. Clark was excellent all afternoon with sterling work in defence, like here. And again here. Oh, Pirro brings it down. Jack Clark with the... Yeah, it's good from Jack Clark. Bicycle kick almost. And working his low slung shorts off to get upfield for attacks as well. Just look at this passage of play. As Swansea attack, Clark is the last man back in defence. And when Sunderland break with the ball to Dan Neal, look at the effort Jack has put in to offer himself on the overlap. He did this all afternoon. Goes down and gets a free kick. On the hour mark, the crowd, sensing things slipping away, tried to rally the team with continuous and rising chanting. Spurred on by the support, Sunderland broke through Neil and Stewart. And here's Dan Neil. Finds Ross Stewart. Just gets caught on Ross's feet. He keeps the ball, though. Jack Clark's caught up the player now. Clark raced up the left to pass Lady Boudier and crossed to the back of the box, where centre-forward Danny Bart cushioned the lovely header for Dan Neil to volley in. Yes! Dan Neil with the goal! And just like that, the crowd had spurred Sunderland level. If anyone needs a credit for the assist there, it's the crowd inside the stadium yeah, of light. Yeah. For the previous five minutes, they have been relentless, getting behind the side. They look dead and buried, to be honest. And it's that what has injected some energy into the side to create that opportunity as well. Yeah. And it's just well created just have a look and well finished. Oh, is, it, is it Danny Bart that cushions it for him or Ross Stewart? Let's have a... It's Danny Bart, isn't it? Yeah, it's Ross there behind him. It's Danny Bart that's in the middle. So I'm not sure what Danny's doing up there. He's broke forward from centre-back, hasn't he? And there's Jack, just goes past his man. He's on a yellow card, just been broke, doesn't defend it very well. Jack stands a nice ball up. Danny, too big and too strong. Back in there, Dan Neal, five yards out, back on level terms. And as you say, Frankie, massive credit to the Sunderland fans. Got right behind the boys, trying to drive them and get them going. And we're back on level terms. Sadly, within four minutes, Swansea had restored their lead with an almost carbon copy of the first goal. Ahmad again, making Gucci's life hard. Grimes plays it through the middle. Cooper finds Manning again in space. Right across the face of the goal. Oh, the takes a deflection. Oh, that's unlucky. That's really unlucky. It is as well. I think Danny Bart actually makes a slide in block. He knows he's got Perot behind him. And he plays the ball to Zicky Linden. Don't worry about me as much. I've got to take 1v1, you see. Picks it down below, though. There's Linden there. As it, Manning, he, can, oh, he doesn't need to take it in touch. He just fizzes it. Oh, it's unlucky, isn't it? Sunderland now had to chase the game with less than 20 minutes left, and in doing so, conceded a third to a long ball. Perhaps Hume can do better here, but you can see how tired the lads are all trying to get back into position. Then loses it to Latiboudier, who's inside the area now, pulls it back. Piro shoots, charged down by Ballard, comes back out. Cooper. Strikes it, straight pass in, and it sneaks in that top corner. It had been a hard afternoon. Could be that. Just watching us back here, Danny. Trey Hume just couldn't bring the ball under control. Yeah, it's Pirro got keeps away it from alive, it. then spins yeah, on so it. Could have rolled his teammates in, and then as it comes to him, takes Cooper a touch. Cooper just smashes it. Smashes it, yeah. And with the contest all but over, Mowbray threw on all the fresh legs he was allowed for the last 10 minutes of the game but it made no difference to the outcome. Swansea were too canny to lose the lead from here. And that was that. Tony said he was going to throw this game in the bin and not bother with the analysis, and I'm inclined to agree. What I will say is that I was doubtful of his selection before we kicked off, but those first 18 minutes before the sending off were excellent, and his tactics seemed spot on. Swansea were unsettled. We denied them the time and space to settle into their normal game, and we looked every inch the better side. Who knows what would have happened if we'd kept it up. See you next time. If you made it this far, well, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, I guess, if you liked it. Share, subscribe if you liked it a lot. And you'll get a notification when the next one of these reviews comes out. Thanks a lot.